Everyone has a story. I get them to tell it. Welcome to the Aaron Bender podcast, a very special edition of the podcast, the first in-person version of 2021. We'll get to my guest here in just a moment. But before we get to my conversation with Dejeuner Michelle, a little about my story. I'm a widowed dad of two girls who just lost their mom, a grieving husband, a man in recovery trying to reconnect with the world with fresh eyes, faith, and perspective, a 20-year broadcast media veteran who had his dream job and then lost it. Nearly two years ago, God gave me a gift, an opportunity to stop, step back, and breathe so I could learn about love, vulnerability, patience, and understanding. My thanks to Big Brother Jake, who's going to be doing the audio engineering for this episode. Thank you very much. Check out his podcast, The Big Brother Jake Podcast, Podcast One, and all your favorite platforms. Also, my thanks to Ken Franklin, cinematographer extraordinaire, at KenFTW on Instagram. Really appreciate all your help. I've never really had a team, just like my guest here is going to get into in this episode. I've never really had a team, so it kind of feels good to have a team, but at the same time, I'm freaking out because I've got a team. Dejeuner Michelle is an artist, a designer, a business owner, and a survivor. Today, we're going to hear from Dejeuner herself for the first time what happened on the morning of March 21st, 2021, that left her broken, bloody, bruised, but not beaten. Dejeuner, thank you very much for uh, joining us today, opening up this uh, this beautiful me. space. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Right off the bat, uh, shout out DJ Head. Yes. He yes. posted on his Instagram story, your Instagram story and your post right. about what happened to you. And we'll, we'll show the pictures you posted uh, in a minute on the YouTube version of this podcast, IGTV as well. But you and I, we started communicating soon after, and, right. and I, I wanted you on the podcast because I was just, I felt like people needed to hear your story as quickly as possible, but you were not ready. No. July not 30th comes, <laughs> and I get a message, not ready, so that means I'm ready. Yeah. What, what, did, what did you mean by that, and how did you get to the point of, of being ready? Um, I don't... I don't even necessarily think that I am ready right now. Obviously, like when I walked in here, I was blustered and anxious and I've been up since like six this morning, so <laughs> I'm not ready, but I'm not one of those wimpy chicks. Like I don't have time to get ready when I need to get shit done. Like yeah, yeah. I just gotta show up, I gotta, I gotta do it. Like I tell everybody, it's okay to be afraid, but you can't let fear lead you. Yep. You got to do it afraid. And I've done some of my best stuff afraid, like terrified, felt unqualified. And everybody's like, you look like you know what you're doing. I'm like, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> just like, fake it till you make it. No, I'm just do like, that shit yeah. till, you, till you learn how to do it the right way. <laughs> I was just talking with a, a former student of mine this week who's kind of needs some guidance after graduation. And they're, they're lacking confidence so they don't do anything. And I'm like, well, that's the thing. You've got to do it to gain the confidence to do it more. People get, people get frozen in fear. And I feel like I've, I kind of understand because I've kind of been in that place like these past couple months. But at the same time, it's like this like mix of like, okay, I'm scared, I'm stopping, I'm, I'm scared, but I got to keep going. Yeah. And it just kind of like comes in and out. But for the most part, it's like, I don't have nobody coming in here making my clothes. I don't have nobody coming here doing... I was ironing these, like pressing them, doing, getting my hair done, setting all this stuff up. I don't have nobody else doing this. So it's yeah. like either I get it done or I complain about I have nobody to get it done. And that's it. Have you always been just power forward, you know, or, have, or was there a moment when it maybe the, the flip switched? I've always been a bull. I have always been a bull. Um, my father was never around, so I'm the oldest of all of my siblings. So, you know, my mom not having a, a man, and then it's like, oh, well, here's this bullheaded oldest kid, you know? So it was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm here. I'm standing in, you know? <laughs> like, and that's what it's been my whole life. So that's it. Have you, at, at what point, and maybe you're not there yet, and maybe you'll never be there because you're always going to be 
the the oldest at, at was there a point at which you didn't feel like your shoulders were broad enough to carry the load um i feel that whether my shoulders were broad enough to carry the load i'll carry the load i've never had a break i've never i don't know how to call a man for help like i've, I've never had that you know most girls learn that with their father and stuff like that mm. i didn't have that around so like Ken, like Ken is like my big brother. So the the closest that I'm I'm going to asking something like that is like head, like I met him and head together. Yeah. So those are the people that I can lean on, like a brother, like a father, something like that. But even so, I don't hardly call. <laughs> How'd your mom do through it all? Through this? Oh, my mom freaked the fuck out. So my mom doesn't live close to me. Yeah. Um, this happened when I was working. So it's the middle of the night. You know, people know my phone's probably on do not disturb all day, depending on what I'm doing. My mom, if she doesn't hear me from day two or something like that, she's not tripping. But I I think I talked to her that day, but I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, oh, shit, let me call them and let them know because they're nowhere near here. And I don't even think they're going to let her in the hospital. So I called her and then I she, she didn't answer. I call my sister, she didn't answer. And then I call my little brother. He's like military, so he's like up. And I'm like, I need you to wake up. He's like, what is wrong with your tooth? They think I'm playing. I'm like, is it's, it's an emergency? I'm not playing. He's like, oh shit. He runs in my mom's room. And my mom's like, what's going on? Like, are you playing around? I'm like, no, something happened. And she's like, they're saying, what the fuck? Like, and I'm like, mom, just stay on the phone with me. I'm about to call, I'm about to go drive to the hospital. She's like, what? And I. I can't see myself, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. she's like, your eyes are rolling in your head. And like, if you go in my apartment, there's like blood everywhere. And so she's like, sit down. And I went to go get some Pedialyte cause I got really dizzy. And so I'm drinking that on the floor literally. And I start almost passing out again, but my mom is on FaceTime with me. So she actually stayed on FaceTime with me for 15 hours because they wouldn't let her come to the hospital or anything like, and I'm like, she was like, can I come sit in the parking lot? I'm like, no bro, like that's not logic. I'm like a really logical person regardless of what I'm feeling emotionally. Yeah. So I'm like, no, you're not gonna sit out there because if they say something, I don't even care if I don't have teeth in my mouth, I'm gonna cuss everybody out. Yeah. So yeah. She, like, just she just wanted home. to be close to her. Right, yeah, but I'm like, mom, I'm okay. Like once I'm not out of here, I will drive straight to you, don't worry, you know? So it was okay. Now when, when we talked initially, we're going back, you know, March, April, whatever point you, you actually posted right. about your, your, your accident, you're, you're like, we'll do this podcast when I'm ready, right. but we're not going to be talking about what actually happened because at that time over the summer, right. you're, you're not ready. The trauma of it all is you just, you just weren't ready. Right. But like you said, you're not necessarily ready now, but you're just, you're going to do it anyway because that's you. Right. You know, um, I'm the mom friend. Like, I always said I didn't want kids. And then God made me the mom friend. So I have a billion kids <laughs> and friends, essentially. But it's like when something's wrong with mom, mom still functions as mom. Yeah. You know, everybody still comes, mom, I need this, mom, I need that. You know, so even when I'm doing this, it's all types of friends, people calling me, oh, can you do this? Oh, can you do that? Oh, can I need this? I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> and it, pe millionaires call my phone, oh, I need this. I'm like, what? what is going through people's heads right now? Like, and, and <laughs> you know, I don't talk that much. I, I'm very private. Like, I, I lived in a car for two years. Nobody knew, you know? So yeah. it's like, I, you don't know anything that I don't want you to know. Like, I don't have anything to hide, but you don't pay my bills. So what do you need to know for, you know? Yeah. But coming down to this place of depression I was like okay I'm an artist like I have to create through this that's what I knew exactly when it happened I'm like god I got off the floor I'm like I don't know what the hell you got going on but I trust you I'm scared as shit I have lit I never even broke a bone bro so I'm yeah. like looking at my teeth in my mouth like what the fuck you know but I'm like there's no way I'm not gonna get rich off this I, I don't care <laughs> like that that's it I, I told my mom, I said, look, between my teeth and my ass, somebody, we're, we're getting paid. That's it. Like, that's it. That's it. That, that's it. Like, I don't care. And so when I, when I decided, <laughs> when I decided, like, look, I'm going to create through this, I, I told myself, look, you have to go down to a low enough place in your depression to feel this. 
whatever it is, whatever reason you're here, but I couldn't even do that in peace because it's like, then I start seeing people reaching out to me, like just from little stuff that I'm posting. Oh, you know, there's day like, I'm not okay right now. Thank you for posting this. Thank you for posting that. So I'm looking around and I'm just like, so all of you guys are depressed and just not saying nothing? Like, what the fuck? And then I'm like, you guys look to me for help. You guys look to me for inspiration. So there's no way in hell that I could just stay here yeah. because if I stop, it all stops. And am I supposed to carry everybody? No, definitely not. But God will call you to, to do more and be more even when you need more. And that's the one thing that my pastor told me, excuse me, <clears throat> when this happened. I was like, bro, I'm tired. I'm tapped out. I don't want to help nobody. Like, I don't I want to talk. I don't want none of this. Like, and he was, he just told me, he said, DJ, you know what your calling is. He said, you know that God gave you enough strength to to give when you don't even have it to give. He he gave you enough love to love when you need love. He gave you the the knowledge and, and the word in your heart to encourage people when you need to be encouraged. I was like, that's some bullshit. I, I don't want to talk. <laughs> like, he's like, but you have to. And I'm like, okay. So here we are. So yeah. I, that's when I told you, like, I'm not ready, but just fuck it. Like, I'm not in as worse of a place as I was. You know, now it's like I, I done got up. I, <laughs> this would be a very different podcast if we were talking back in May, right. June, July. Right. Because yeah. when I first cut the footage, I, I didn't even expect that. Like I said, I've literally never broken a bone. Like, yeah. so I'm looking at this footage and I'm like, holy shit, having flashbacks. And I'm like. I don't even remember falling, so I don't remember even how that felt when it all happened. So I'm like, why am I having flashbacks? Why am I having PTSD? Why are these sounds like making me like, but it, it was happening and I had to address it and literally just sit in my house in whatever that was. And then that's when I was like, okay, let me not cut any more footage right now because I can't look at this. <laughs> right, yeah, at some point you've, you've got to recognize and accept that it's it's better to step back. You come back another time, right. whether that's in an hour or in a week or in a month. Right. It's going to be there. The footage is going to be there. It's not right. going anywhere. It, but your mental health needs to be in, a, in, in the best place possible. Let's, because you've referenced it a few times, some specifics, let's talk some specifics. That morning, early morning, 4 o'clock, March 21st, 2021, what happened? I think I fell, I don't know if I fell on the 21st, and then when I woke up in the morning, it was the 22nd, but something like that. But we'll, it was like we'll some, figure that sometime out. overnight. Um, I was supposed to go to bed. I, <laughs> I was supposed to go eat and go to bed. That's literally what I was doing. I was walking out of the office. I had been taking this course um, from this guy named Him 500. He's a credit course. I used to work at a bank. So before I did art, any of this, like that was my first OCD mm -hmm. credit. When I got there, I told him, I'm like, I want you guys to teach me everything. Like teach me the loopholes, teach me in and out, you know, credit cards. I was a beast getting awards for selling all that stuff. So that's where I started it. I have, I had an 800 credit score almost in my car. Like, and, and people don't even know the reason that I slept in my car was so I wouldn't mess up my credit. So I could keep running my business and everything else. Like that's how much it was. So I'm starting a whole nother company. I was doing that course for like 12 hours. So it was two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh shit, I need to go to sleep. So I start wrapping everything up. It ends up being like almost close to four. Yeah. That's when I fell. And then, you know, I called the ambulance. They took me to the hospital. Uh, I was there. It was the worst experience ever. They're idiots. Like I, I feel bad, like for all the medical staff for sure. But I definitely hated the hospital that they took me to. I asked them to change it. They wouldn't. But they they sewed me back up. Like I was in Afghanistan, like at war. Yeah, <laughs> like, just like just, just on the totally battlefield. Totally botched my lip. Yeah. Didn't do anything about my teeth. So I'm literally sitting there for 15 hours in the hospital before they even gave me any type of food, any type of anything. Like I had to order like. Fifty dollars worth of LA Cafe, like please just bring it to the hospital. I cannot eat. Like they came and they brought it and everything, but I just sat there for hours and then I cussed them out and I left and I signed a, a waiver or whatever because against medical advice you're yeah, taking off. Yeah, they, right, they weren't doing right. anything. I didn't even give you an echo. Like before we get too too far away from it, uh, you mentioned you fell. Yeah, it's not as if you just tripped and landed awkwardly. You know you. You fainted. You passed out. You blacked out. Yeah. Twenty-two minutes of your life gone. Right. What happened? Like, like the like physically. What um, happened? I all I remember was standing up and I was walking and I was reading a text message and I was responding to it 
And then I'm like, oh, my head. And then I'm like, uh. So I breathe real quick, you know, because they always tell you, like, put your hands up or take a deep breath real quick, you know. And I thought I was okay. So I, I feel myself light. So I'm like, let me sit down. So I, I'm telling myself to sit down. And I think what, what someone had told me was that your body had already shut down or was starting to shut down. Yeah. And it was just catching up to you. So when I started to try to, like, sit down, it ended up actually kind of like working against me and I whiplashed into the floor. So my teeth are in my floor prints. Like when we're done, like I'm gonna take you up there and like you can see on the floor, like my teeth are in the floor. They hooked in the floor. I have to make them actually take that floor part out because I don't want to see it. But wow. I all all I remember is literally waking up and when I woke up, my face was like this and I felt a hand on the back of my neck. So you know I'm wait, in my wait, what do you mean you felt a hand on the back of your neck? I felt a hand on the back of my neck. and So some, somebody was there? Nobody was there. Nobody was there. I felt a hand on the back of my neck. And I know I felt a hand on the back of my neck because if, if I get scared or something and I flinch, or you know, if you think somebody's behind you and you flinch like that, yeah, yeah. all I remember was pressing, somebody pressing like this, and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I get up, and I look, and I'm like, nobody's there. And I'm like, oh, I know what this was. <laughs> I know what this was. And immediately, this Bible verse popped into my head when it said, um, you fought with man and with God and you won. And it was like when, you know, Jacob and like the old man, he didn't know who he was and they were fighting and he popped his hip out of socket. I'm not a pastor or anything like that. So, <laughs> but it, it was that parable. You can Google it, it'll come up, you know, but I remember, but that's what happened. There was nobody there though. Everybody's like, why isn't anybody here? Who was there with her? Did you get in a car accident? I'm like, no, bro. I was working. <laughs> I was home. I was working. That was it. You say you're working because you're always working. <laughs> well, money doesn't grow on trees, unfortunately. Just the idea <laughs> that, that you're even sitting down for this long. When's the last time you sat down for about as long as it's going to take to do this podcast and not really do more than one other thing? My brain doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't. Like, I lay down at night and I'm like, oh, shit, did I answer that email? Did I text this person back? Did any of my customers write me on Instagram? Did I, did I pay this bill? Did I yeah. do that? Something. Yeah. Always something. It's always something, yeah. And that's, that's why I'm like, okay, I'm tired. I, I need to actually rest. But I'm not in a position to rest because it's like, now I got this documentary that we're going to shoot. And yeah. So the... Medically speaking, I mean, obviously, we look at you and there still is work to be done. Absolutely. Everybody, um, I can't even tell you how many Instagram physicians I've met since this happened. And it, <laughs> I, I, I get it. Wait, are those like the, the Twitter COVID experts? Or? Yeah, uh, okay. something okay. like that. Okay. You know, everybody's <laughs> These chiming are actual in. actual physicians. Everybody has their panels, you know, like, I'm like, damn, you guys, y'all went to school for this long? How you know, you know? But everybody's like, oh, you're just going to go get veneers? That's fine. I'm like, do you guys know how much veneers cost? Three days after this accident, I got an $80,000 veneer quote. And wow. that's just veneers. But see, nobody knows when I fell... I'm not small, so I'm, I, and I was heavier than this. I got sick after the accident, and I lost like 15 pounds. I was 15 pounds heavier than this. All my weight, my face broke my fall. Like, it wasn't my hands, anything like that. I, I woke up face down. I, I fell on this one, and this one was up, but my teeth broke the fall, so all of this is shattered. My teeth went, all, my teeth were all the way in my nose, like up here. So they had to repair under my nasal floor, like they told me when they opened up my gums, it looked like glass. They were like, we just scrubbed it all out. They said it was way more extensive. That's the first thing he said when he woke me up from surgery. He said, you're gonna be in a lot more pain than I thought you were in. He said, I thought we could like recover stuff, but everything was shattered, like everything. Wow. So they actually have to, the bone inside my mouth is actually regrowing because they put like my blood and like the bone graft material and all of that. But nobody knows what that means, you know? That, yeah. that means, oh no, I definitely can't go get veneers. No, I definitely can't go just get implants. Every bone graft surgery is four months in between the surgeries for the bone to grow. Then I told the doctors, I told you I'm very specific when I met you. 
<laughs> I'm like, no. He's like, oh, well, we can just save one of these tooth. I'm like, teeth. I'm like, nah, that's that's not even. It's kind of messing with my OCD. I'll pay whatever the money is. Just take them all out. So then they, you know, they talked amongst each other and they're like, well, we just want to save it. It's okay. I'm like, okay, whatever. I asked what, what, tell me everything. Tell, tell me what is going to happen if I decide to do it later, all that. They missed the one part that was like, hey, if we take this tooth out, you're going to need another bone graft. So, you know, coming down, I'm like, after the first surgery, I'm like, nah, I want this out. So then I had to have another surgery. And they ended up having to like take money off of that because he was like, oh, the tooth is good. And then he did the x-ray for it right before the surgery. He's like, oh, you're right. I said, oh, I'm right. <laughs> So now I'm having two surgeries because of you. Oh, man. And, and that's just the first couple, just to even the emergency work, you know? Right, so. right. And, and, and that's, that's not even touching what you need to do going forward, assuming that you can do what you need to do going forward. Is there a chance that you, you, you might not be able to have a, quote, full smile again? Or is that not an option? Oh, that's definitely not an option. Like, that's definitely, definitely not an option. It's going to take a while. I'm not going to have teeth again until, like, December 2022. Uh, something like that. Because, so this is on, this, I actually just got the second bone graft surgery. So that's on a four-month timer right now. The first one got done, um, I think, March 30th or something like that. Or, like, the yeah. first week of April, maybe. So whatever that time frame is. And it's, it's growing. They already showed me the x-rays and stuff like that. But... On top of that, when I fell, all of my teeth shifted. So all of my teeth were in like cool position, everything else had like a little bit of an overwrite. But when I fell, like it literally sent some of them this way, some of them just like this. So they were like, look, we can't even put your implants in until all of your teeth are back in order. And I'm like, okay, bro, now you're about to piss me off. Like, what are you even talking about right now? We're talking braces or or I'm like, I'm definitely, or- definitely never getting braces. So now we're talking about, you know, eight thousand dollars for invisalign yeah. you know and then not even regular invisalign because everybody has teeth so they can just go get molds they're literally like making a special one like i photoshopped a picture of the invisalign trays told them like this is how i want it you know flatten out the front because i'm like look i don't give a shit about not having teeth right now like i don't You've i care. accepted that right yeah right. like fuck it like I, I don't care but i need to work like i haven't been able to work I, you know, I was bartending a long time ago, like before this happened, you know, of course, after COVID, we were waiting to go back and we can't like, I I can't go and I will go in a club like this, but you know, Hollywood and their standards, they're not letting me go in a club like this. So it's like, people don't even know I haven't even been able to work. Like, and so that's where this depression and all that shit is coming from. Cause I'm like, I I hustle. I'm, I'm a hustler, a hustler that can't hustle. That's like. That's detrimental. You know, it's like yeah. I got responsibilities. Ain't nobody banging down my door to pay my bills. I, I take this. I, I pay these invoices. I didn't have no man come put this money into my company. I put this money up, you know. So that that has been the hardest part. I, I think I told God, I'm like, look, bro, I, I don't care about my teeth at this rate. But not being able to work, like now you're playing with me. Like <laughs> You got to give me what, something. You gotta yeah, give me something. like I need something because it's like I don't want to sit here and paint. I want to go work. Like, yeah, yeah. And I can't. Like the doctors are, the doctors begged me when I first came, they were like, we need you to stop. Like, so are you waiving these medical bills or <laughs> paying this rent? Cause where you want me to live? You know? Right. I've lived in my car once. I'm, I'm not, not going back. <laughs> right. You get me. <laughs> you get me. Uh, before we move off from like just the physical things, um, what was it like kind of relearning to eat, relearning to drink, relearning to talk? Bro. I was like, literally, (laughs) I'm like, Ma, look, I can't get skinny. And she's like, well, you got to eat potatoes. I ate so many potatoes that I wanted to, like, throw up. I think I haven't even eaten mashed potatoes since, like, May, maybe. But it was really weird because, and it was frustrating to the point where I didn't want to eat because it hurt like hell, you know, especially until they took that tooth out. Like, I couldn't even close my mouth all the way. But I'm mashing up, like, shrimp and mashed potatoes and, like, pulverizing it and my little brother's looking like what is that you're about to eat that <laughs> yeah and i'm like literally like that's the only way because what happened was here shrimp smoothie bro it was the worst and i'm like 
mom, I don't want to eat. And she's like, you have to take medicine because the medicine started making me sick because there was nothing in my stomach. I don't drink regular milk. So it's like, I can't just take the pill with milk and all of that. So it was hard. It was a lot of like mashed up broccoli. My sister was cooking me (laughs) super soft broccoli and a lot of applesauce, a lot of like my mom, Jesus Christ, when I came to her house, it was a whole table full of like, what is that? Uh, like the electrolytes, I don't know, one of those. Oh, one of, like Gatorade or Gatorade, or the other one. Or, it's it's uh, another one. It's not Gatorade, but it's another one. And she vitamin bought, water. Yeah, I'm like, Ma, I don't even drink this. What is this? Yeah. She's like, you have to, you have to, <laughs> because the doctors were oh, telling insure. me. Oh, Insure. Oh, I just started drinking Insure once. Oh, okay, okay. We're and <laughs> everybody on the internet. So we've gone from baby to uh, 75 years old <laughs> in, in yeah. about three months. <laughs> basically, basically. And then all the, you know, the internet physicians have told me, you know, drink Insure, you'll gain your way back. Right. I'm like, bro, I drank 24 Insures and I gained three pounds. <laughs> oh my God. Everybody let me down. <laughs> like, uh, so I feel like that, let, let's just put a bow on that medical side of things and the, the physical side of things. Um, so the idea of accepting help and acknowledging that maybe you need help, you've got a GoFundMe. How difficult was it to allow one of your best friends to <laughs> to set that up? Um, it 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 took a while. It's what is this August, and we just did it. Um, she had asked me my she's my niece's mom. Her name's Khadija. She had asked me right out of the gate, like, who's gonna make the GoFundMe? Like, cause you know, and I'm like. First of all, you know, when I thought it was just my teeth, I was looking at 40, 50 K, you know, and I'm like doing the math. How many te- like my hoodie is one hundred and twenty dollars. So I'm like, OK, 40 K, one hundred and twenty dollars, three hundred some dollars. I'm like, look, bro, I don't need a GoFundMe. If I could just get enough promotion to get three, four hundred orders, I could pay for it myself. And so she's asking me this over and over and over, like, and like, I know you don't want to do it, but have you thought about it? And I'm like, no, bro, I'm, I'm trying to get this business scaled. And then, you know, my, my friend Micho, he told me, everybody's not a CEO, Disney. Everybody's not going to think like you. So put people in position and, and have them do what you need to do. So I told her, I said, look, I can't focus on a GoFundMe and what I'm trying to do at the same time. So if you want to make a GoFundMe, write out how you feel. Write out what you've told me about you know, how you don't like how I'm such a good friend to a bunch of people, how people take advantage of me, how it pisses you off because you're my closest friend behind the scenes and and you see how much I give to people and then you see how much people have fucked me over, you know? Yeah. I'm like, write it all out, you know, I'll help you edit it, whatever, and then, you know, we'll do it together, whatever. I got to figure all this other shit out because you can't do none of this for me. So that's how that happened. And while I was talking to her that last night, Head called me. He, I had called him. I was like, I need to talk to you. We're going to do the podcast. I'm so scared. I was like, I need five <laughs> minutes. He happened to call me while me and her were, you know, writing it out. And he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, um, I'm helping my friend write, you know, this GoFundMe or whatever, whatever. And he's like, you're helping somebody write a GoFundMe for you. So this is my life. Like, so accepting help, I'm learning to accept it. But even in accepting it, I, I need a certain caliber of help because I will not fall below what I right. Where I set the bar is where I set the bar. So either you got to come right at it or at least <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm very, I'm Beyonce specific, like, yeah. and, and that's how it is. But, you know, I didn't know it was going to be damn near $200,000 worth of medical bills and a year and a half worth of surgery. So I'm like, go ahead. Cause I do need to check out. And I haven't been able to check out. Yeah. I, I do need to be able to get off Instagram if I want to get off Instagram. I do need to not be able to have to go get orders and stuff right now. But I can't do that. And then with all these surgeries, like the next surgery, this surgery is about to put me out for a while. And I'm so not looking forward to it. But The wrist surgery, right? The wrist surgery, yeah. And I, I don't have a choice. But I'm still trying to figure out how to scale this business and do everything else. Yeah. While that's going on, I'm not I'm not banking on a GoFundMe. But is it there? Will it Will it meet the 200k yeah it'll meet it but i i gotta think for the team i don't have a team yet but all i've ever known how to do is think for the team so when i do get my team i'll be able to do it yeah yeah and the link is in your bio on instagram it'll be on the show notes as well for the podcast on youtube yeah. and uh and, right. and the podcast right itself. right right yeah so you know we'll see we, we're gonna figure it out 
we we gonna figure it out. I thank you to everybody who's donated so far. I appreciate you guys. Um, seeing that picture over and over really like started giving me flashbacks again. As people were sharing their uh, yeah. your post on their Instagram right. and other social media, right? Because you know I looked up and it was like. 80, 90 people sharing it at one time, and I was like, holy shit, like, this is my face. Like, and you know, it's like you upload the ugliest picture you've ever taken. Right. <laughs> and it's like, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, oh, um, I'm gonna go watch X Men. Actually, I wanna watch Harry Potter. I was like, I'm gonna go oh, watch Harry right. Potter. Yeah, I remember that. I remember and that. I'm gonna sit down, and I'm not gonna look at Instagram for a couple hours because it's like email, email. I'm like, oh, this is too much. Like, it kind of like made me think about in COVID when everybody was watching that like death hole and I'm like, no, no, mm -mm. I'm not gonna go crazy. There's no way. It'll come when it comes. I'll figure it out when I figure it out. And that was it. You brought up depression and, and kind of go with me on this because as somebody who, you know, you're, you're the oldest of your siblings, you are like a second mom to them and in many ways to many people, a first mom, you know, you, like you said, you're the mom friend. You don't have time for feelings. You know, you don't have time to deal with your depression. You don't have time. A lot of people in your position wouldn't even recognize depression and, and accept that maybe they are depressed. Right. How did you get to the point where you're like, okay, I know I need to power through all this, but I also need to take care of myself because a lot of people in your position wouldn't stop to I do that. I don't know if I've even really powered through it. Like, I I don't think I have all the way. But it's like, I'm an adult. At, at, the, at the beginning and the end of every day, I'm an adult. I have responsibilities. <laughs> These people want this money for me to live here. You know, my car note got to get paid. Everything got to get paid for. Yeah. Nobody is beating down my door to do this. And so it's like, you're going to sit there and cry about it? Or you gonna figure that shit out? That's my life. That's that's my whole life. You know, there, there has to be a balance of actually addressing issues and everything else. So, like in this time of sitting there and not being able to work, you know, I'm doing a lot of shadow work, a lot of like digging to the root of everything. You know, these generational curses that I'm breaking and everything else. And it's it's a lot. It, it's heavy, but you gotta power through that shit. I, I don't have a choice. Somebody want to come drop off half a million so I could just go duck off for a month. That would be great. Like that would all the therapy in the world. Like, let's do it. But I don't have time for that. So I have to create from this place of imperfection until I figure it out. At what point did you kind of become a creator, if you will? Have, you've always been an artist. I've always been you, creative. Like yeah. I always used to like make little stupid stuff. I always cooked like you know, my mom is very like thoughtful and like making people stuff. So, you know, that's where I kind of got it from. A lot of my creativity came from like love and like if I would like somebody like making stuff like that. And then when like me and my first boyfriend broke up and I was super depressed, I was literally looking for anything to shut my brain off, you know? And I started like melting crayons and that's where it started. And then once I started doing these huge melted crayon paintings, I'm like, well, I want to draw stuff on here, but I don't know how to draw. And I start tracing stuff and figure it out. And then that's where all of this came about. So it's just like, it, it was always in me. It's just never something that I wanted. I told God at one point in time, I was like, bro, I don't want no business. I don't, I, I don't want to feel like the responsible kid doing the group project for the rest of my life. I don't want to have employees that don't work like me. And then I get, I got to worry about it. I got, because right, right. I, I don't do that. Well, and then God's like, oh, well. Here's your business, and you're gonna love it so much that you don't, you don't have no choice. I'm like, okay. I do appreciate the part where you skipped over how you were playing with fire. You know, you just when? you call it melted crayons. You're the yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got a blow touch upstairs. Like, it's very, it's very, very organized. My first boyfriend broke up with me. I was melting crayons. I hear I was playing with fire. I am a pyro. <laughs> I actually am a pyro. I, I definitely could take a Lysol can and torch it real quick. Like, What was the first thing you painted? The first thing that I ever painted was, um, it's, some, it's a picture that said, like, fuck you, love you. And then I have, I actually have a picture of it in my office. The, that was the first painting painting. Yeah. The first like piece of art that I did at all was the crayons. And I had, it was a canvas like this, and I glued them all to the top. 
And you actually don't have to have fire for that one. <laughs> we used a blow dryer. It took a long time. Oh, I'm sure it did. Yeah, yeah so yeah. we just sit there with the blow dryer the whole time. And I think, actually, that one's upstairs, too, so I'll show you. You can get yeah. the footage, all of that. But from there, it was like, wow, I can make my brain turn off like, and do something that actually makes me happy. And I literally created for a year, almost oh, two I years, like imagine, a maniac. Like, once, you know, pardon the pun, once that fire was lit, you're yeah. just like, okay, wow, I have found an outlet. I have found a, a medium for me to get past whatever it is I'm working through. Right. Yeah. 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 So I, and I love it. Like, and that's, that's always your fallback now. You know, it's weird because now it's like, it, it's not just, oh, I'm this depressed little girl in a, well, not little girl, but this, you know, just depressed person in a yeah. room painting all these pictures, not having much responsibility. And now it's like, people want these paintings and then people want these clothes. And now I'm a business owner and now I'm the assistant and now I'm the director and now I'm this, this, and this. So it's days when I don't even want to paint. I haven't even painted since March, like 10, like probably 15 days before this accident. Wow. That's not supposed to be ringing. Sorry. That's okay. Um, I, I'm surprised to hear that though, because as, as somebody who leans into their creativity when they're going through shit, I would imagine this is the most powerful thing, the most traumatic thing you've ever gone through, and yet you've not picked up a brush, you've not melted a crayon? No. Um, so when I moved here, nobody knew I was homeless. And so I literally got a U-Haul, and I moved everything from everywhere my stuff was for 12 straight hours, and I moved everything in my house. And I asked someone to come uh, to come move these two specific boxes that had my big metal inventory shelves in there. And it was like a guy that I had, I was, I had used to date and he, you know, was basically trying to talk to me again. I'm like, yeah, no. And, um, <laughs> I'm like, are you going to move these boxes or not? You know? And he had already said yes before I got the YouTube, I mean the U-Haul and then he changed his mind. So I went and I was lifting by myself. That's how I dislocated my wrist. But when I fell, it made it even worse. So right before I fell, right before this whole accident, I had an art show in New York. I was in New York from like the 3rd to the 11th or something like that. And I did a huge painting, like almost the size of this right here. And the doctor was like, look, Dejeuner, I don't want you to paint. Like, I know you have to paint, so I'm gonna rehab you so that you can paint. But look, after this, I need you to put it down. Like my wrist is dislocated in five places right here. Jeez. The tendon is torn. My, the bottom of my thumb is supposed to be right here. It's up here. So like, I can't even pick up my phone. I'm, I'm not supposed to be picking up my phone. If I turn this any kind of wrong way, I don't, I can't gauge which exactly it is. Yeah. I'll be screaming. Have you called Marvel to see if they have any like Wolverine props that you can? Listen, I went down to the beach and the, the water was moving and I was like, okay, so I'm Storm and Wolverine? Like, <laughs> what's up? Cause I'm, I'm getting scared and I'm sitting, you know, I'm sitting there praying, I'm crying. And I'm just like locked in like to the water. And then I look up and it's all these people like on the hill behind me just staring. And I'm like, what was I just doing? Like, <laughs> It's here. It's, it's me not being ready is what people are calling out this out of me. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I've got my phone here because I want to find a text from DJ Head because <laughs> what did he uh, say? well, that's the thing I asked him. I, I just said, hey, uh, I, the prompt was, I'm talking to Dejeuner tomorrow for the podcast. What comes to mind for you when you think of her? And I want to include it in our conversation. What did he say? Um, well, let me scroll down past all the profanity here. Uh, no, he, a fighter with tenacity and one of the most driven humans I know. I love that about her. When you hear... Thanks, Gramps. That, <laughs> when you hear that from somebody like DJ Head, who you know pulls no punches what goes through your mind and you know what what does that stir um it gives me a good progress report like a good report card because see you know the world just found head but i've known head since 2009 you know head used to come to my house we used to cook these huge extravagant meals and just you know lay on the floor and talk and he would do his radio stuff and his music stuff we <laughs> i've known him forever so it's like for him to say that you know like we've done all this i like i told you i'm like a female him in regards to just 
look, I'm getting straight to it. Like, what are we here for, you know? But we did all this together. Like, I, I've been to his mom's house. Like, I sat in that room where, you know, that <laughs> that room where he's in with his headphones and, like, yeah. he has his feet in the thing. Like, you know how many days I spent in that room with him? Like, <laughs> so it's, like, it, it's good to hear somebody who's seen me really, really grow up, you know, like, say something like that about me. Especially because right now everybody's looking at me like, oh, she's okay. And I'm like, no, I'm not. But here we are. Yeah here we are so that that's good you know it you get tired of being strong but i wouldn't want to be a weak bitch like ever i want to go back <laughs> to <laughs> i want to go back to the idea of creating and you know it, it started out as a place for you to you know it was your own form of therapy you know right. at what point did it turn into okay this this could be a business and how do you you already talked about how God is like, no, it's going to be a business. You're going to do it. But how do you find that balance between, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be inspired. I'm going to create something, but uh, I also need to pay the bills. I haven't found it. I, I haven't found it yet. When I, did, when I did the art show, believe it or not, I didn't even want to do it. I was just like, okay, it's another opportunity for me to showcase my stuff. I haven't gotten to showcase anything in a year. Fuck it, let's do it. And, you know, my, my friend in New York called me. I do the same show for every three years, well, every year. And he's like, look, I need you to bring all the paintings back. And so I, I'm like, I don't want to paint anything new. I, I, he's yeah. like, I need you to paint something new. And I'm like. I'm not there. I'm, I'm... He's like, look, I just need you to paint something new. And I need you to bring the other two. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I painted it. I painted this huge one. I got like a huge light sign on it and everything else. Um, I hate having to produce under duress, but I, I can, you know? And so that's what I did. And then I promised my doctor, okay, look, I, I'll put it down. I, I won't do it after this, you know, I, cause I did hurt my hand even more. Like I'm packaging these huge, a huge like five by six book painting, you know? And then a, another painting that's like 24 by 48 and 36 by 48. So it's just, you, you gotta get it done. like. Yeah. I, this is my dream. I'll be damned if I let my hand come in the way of that. So you 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 spent all your life relying on you, you know, and, and helping others, doing for others, right? Doing when when others couldn't or wouldn't. Since March, you've been put into a position where you need help, right? Where how has that transition been for you to somebody who? You, maybe you don't ask for it, but you at, at least accept it. Um, I'm learning how to accept help, but it's it's been hell. Like, it's been nothing short of hell because it's it's like I I don't I'm not a wimpy chick. Like I, I do have emotions and everything else. I'm definitely a girl, but I'm not like a oh my hand is hurting. Can you put a band aid on? It's like okay, I'm about to open the band aid pack with this hand, figure out how to do it. Like and, yeah. and that's it. You know, I, I I get shit done. Like, and it's like it's put me in a place to where I'm sitting here like who heals the healer who who takes care of the person that takes care of everybody else and it's like the person that takes care of everybody else takes care of themselves so that's what it is you know and you know my family of course like I have like a couple very close friends that have been around and everything else but even my mom and them I'm like okay you guys have to stop like this is too much I'm not used to somebody waiting on me hand and foot like my sister it was so scared for me to even walk up and down the stairs. She's like, grab the wear elders nay. I'm like, I'm not like some <laughs> ball risk. Like, but because they don't know what happened, like right. they were freaking out, you know? But like all that baby and attention, I think I gave my mom like a solid two or three weeks at her house. And I'm like, look, I gotta go. I, I gotta go break down in peace. I gotta go. I, I can't do this. Like, I can't. Like, I know you guys care, but I can't do this. Because if, if, if you just said, you know what, I am checking out of life for a while, three months, six months, a year, people would be like, totally get it. I've seen the pictures. I've talked to you. I would totally get it. But you're like, ah, two or three weeks. Uh, let's, let's, get back to, let's get back to the real world, however that looks and however I look. I couldn't even sit there that two or three weeks. That shit was hell. I, I had, I, that's where my insomnia started from the accident. Because I'm sitting there and how you're like, oh, you know, at what point do you just sit down and not do anything? And I'm never like, 
never. I'm, I'm having to promote on the internet more than ever. Then it's like the algorithm. You got to post stuff even if you don't want to post everything else. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there. I can't work. I can't move. I'm far away from my stuff. And I'm just sitting here thinking in pain, like, what the fuck am I going to do? And I'm like, no, I, I, I can't. Like, nobody can come pick. There's not one person on this world and this earth that I can call and say, I need you to go pick up my orders. I need you to go do this. I need you to go do that. I need you to run it as efficiently as I would run it and everything else. I don't have that. I have someone that I can leave my business to, but just leave it. Just because it's safe doesn't mean it's ever going to produce anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So no, I, I don't. I don't have a choice. I I never had the luxury of making excuses. I never had somebody, you know, here I got you. Here I I, I got you. You know, maybe in intervals and stuff like that. I have friends, but they can only do so much. Has this led to uh, at least the idea of some delegation of tasks, or are you still at a position where it's like, no, I I I'm one hundred. That's. I mean, I come in this room a lot. And I sit in here and I like pray and I'm like, I can't wait to fill this table up and have my team here. But I don't have a team. Yeah. Like the the only person that I can say that is a solid person that I could, you know, this is my team, Ken. Like the first two videos that I've shot, he shot them. The, the, the footage when I was homeless and I told him you cannot tell nobody whatever we're doing this, this and this, he was shooting that. So somebody like him, or j- well not somebody like him, just him. Like. I can call on him. I can say, we need to do this, this, and this, like today. But no, because what I learned in my business, what I know about my business is all self-taught. So what it would take for me to have the patience to teach somebody else that, I don't have it. Can I pay somebody that's already skilled enough to do it? Absolutely. But like, you can't call somebody like, hey, I need you to go clean your kitchen because you're uber depressed and your mouth is hurting. Like, I just can't really do that. I can call a maid or something like that, but... I just gotta get shit done. You know, <laughs> it's actually a screenshot in my phone from, I gotta find it, I, I'll show you afterwards. Yeah. It's a note that I left literally right before I went into surgery. My, I went to my printers and I'm like, Angelica, I'm going into surgery. Uh, I sent you some more blanks. Here's the blanks that I had in my house. I'm not gonna be conscious for a couple hours. I'll call you when I get out. I'll come pick up the clothes in a couple days. That's how I work. I, I was in New York at my art show literally Ubering my orders from here to here to here to them to package it up. And I left like all of the the packaging and everything, address and everything, take it here, use my FedEx number, do this, this and this. I I, I can't depend on people. Like right. I, I and I refuse to let people work for me for free. I I, I have never felt right about that. I, I've never felt okay with being the person that eats while benefiting off of everybody else, you know? I have paid people, even in this pro- this whole process, I've paid people to come out, shoot this, do this, whatever, and not taking no money from it, you know, to make sure everybody else is taken care of, you know, because I don't want people to, to work with me and be like, oh, she tried to play me and she went and got rich. Right. I want them to say like, no, bro, like she came, I, she came, she hired me and she was helping me work, you know, and she paid me and she tipped me, you know, she took care of me. Like, I want people to be happy. Like, I, I want them to know, like, I'm not a tyrant. I'm just a person. Like... If I need help, I, I want to pay you to help me. You know, like of course I have friends and stuff, but don't get it twisted, uh, Dejeuner. I've, I've witnessed it so far today. She can go into tyrant mode. I just not Tyra, but honestly, maybe a little Tyra too. Maybe. <laughs> you know, I, I don't. You know, I set things up. Like I told you, you know, okay, we're gonna start at eleven. We'll come early if you need to. Yeah. But before you got here, ten thirty, I'm down here talking to them. Hey, look, I have cameraman on the way. Whatever the case may be. <laughs> Just when they it, get right? there, let them in there. Whatever the case may be. So I go to my house and I'm thinking everything's okay. I gotta come back and micromanage you for a job that you're getting paid for. Why am I doing this? Why Why are we having this conversation? And then I gotta repeat myself. Take me through the emotional <laughs> roller coaster because you celebrated a birthday shortly after your accident and your yeah. fall, and there you are, all dressed up in your you know in your birthday best, smiling as big a smile as possible, and that's one of the most endearing things I, I think that that drew me to you and want to talk with you because for everybody who thinks social media is fake right. and a lot of it is, maybe right. most of it is. Right. Uh, not your IG. Your IG no. is the farthest from fake because you're like, this happened to me and here I am still living, still 
celebrating my life because I could be dead. I could, you know, not just from the fall, but from you know, depression right. and things that have happened in your life. Right. So take me through that emotional roller coaster where they're like, you know, let's let's do this party, and I'm we're still going to do it. I'm going to take a bunch of pictures too. So there was no party. Um, there was no nothing. I I do everything myself. Everything. So I call my friends. Um, I'm like, look, I need one of you to come take this picture. Um, I'll show you how to work the camera. I brought my camera. He's the person that told me how to be a photographer. I brought my camera. I even turned the camera around, tried to shoot it myself, but my, my clicker stopped working. So I'm like, I need you to figure this out and do it right. Yeah. I fucked it up a little bit, but it ended up working out. So, <laughs> But, you know, we went. I booked a studio. I bought the cake, and we did it. That's great. And that was That's it. Great. On my actual birthday, I got a fuck ton of messages, like so many messages, and we didn't do anything. And it's so funny because I lose my teeth and everybody wants to go out to eat. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, okay, guys, I need you guys to stop asking me this because it's like, I already can't talk, yeah. but how do you want me to eat? Like, <laughs> how do you want, have you ever tried to eat a burrito with no teeth? I have not. I, I, I can honestly say I have not. Listen, it is humbling. It, it, it is humbling trying to eat pizza and cut it up like uh, chicken wings and like how I'm craving them and I have no front teeth is um, it's a little bit of torture. Is there a Dejeuner line of bibs coming out? No. Dejeuner made it? No. <laughs> no. It's a whole <laughs> lot of other businesses that got birth, but definitely not no bibs. But, you know, the bibs is not even the hard part. It's just like chewing. Like, yeah. And, yeah. you know, when it first happened, the tooth was like hanging out of my mouth for like two weeks. And I'm like, okay, you, got, you guys got to figure this out because this is not okay. But trying to eat afterwards, it's like, you know, everything's sewn up. It, it literally felt like if I picked this piece of metal up and tried to shove it in my mouth, because I was like, Mom, like, why does my head hurt? I'm like, all of this has so much pressure in it. And she's like, you just, she was like, you just got to go through it. And I'm like, okay. So I, I didn't do anything. What kind of conversations have you had with God about what's been going on? Some real blunt ones some real blunt ones and that that's that's why i be telling people like stop thinking you got to be perfect to talk to god you could talk to god and tell god i'm i'm mad like i'm i'm pissed the fuck off like maybe not in such words but yeah, I, yeah. I, i'm not even gonna i'm not gonna sit here and lie on on beyonce's internet whatever and say that i haven't cussed when i've been praying because let me tell you i have and the switch is on the wall over there um I'm like, bro, what the fuck? What, what are you doing? Yeah. What exactly are you doing? But um, it's <laughs> nobody. Nobody knows this. I said it actually on like my baptism um, recordings, like the stuff that I was looking at last night. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't told anybody from then. So I'm going to tell you now. But, you know, I talked to God about this. You know, I, I had a pastor tell me. They came, they, they brought me in front of the church and prophesied over me. Oh, you know, God is going to make your name great. There's wealth coming to your life, you know, because you're changing your life and everything else for God and blah, blah, blah. You know, your, your art is going to be displayed in huge venues and everything else. But I'm like, look, bro, I already told you I didn't want this. One. <laughs> Two, I'm not doing that whole you make me famous, I become a celebrity thing, and then I got to have somebody close to me die. That's what I'm not doing. Like everybody all these great people you hear about these crazy stories you know like and I'm like no I'm like whatever happens it, it needs to hit me and if you you decide that the only way that I could do this and and be famous whatever and and have my art people actually find out who I am is is having somebody close to me die I don't want it I will not go for it and that's it imagine me telling God this and I was for real but I, I told I prayed prayers during COVID even I said look I need nothing to hit my family, nothing. My family already doesn't understand why I go to church as much as I do, why I was in church during COVID, why I'm spending thousands of, do thousands of dollars on tithes and offering, and I'm homeless, even now, you know? But I believe in it, like I stand on that, you know? And anything I stand on, like I I'm gonna walk it down. And so I told him like, look, bro, if you give me COVID, I know you'll heal me from it. But if you give it to my family members, they might fall in it and I need you to not do that. And so when I woke up and like I was in the hospital and just like afterwards, he was like, Dejanay, you asked me for this. 
you you asked me not to let it hit nobody else and i was like okay so what are we doing like what and at that moment it was just like record everything record everything the good the bad everything just put it all out because nobody gets me to talk like this I might call ahead and talk like this or something like that, but even then, those conversations are far and few because he got shit to do, I got shit to do. But nobody gets me to talk like this. So no, everybody sees me, oh, Thanksgiving, she was homeless for two years, what, what, what? Like, yep, how? And like, I have friends calling me, yelling at me, Thursday, I saw you almost every week. I saw you at the club, I saw you here, you came to my house, why didn't you tell me? Tell you for what? Like, yeah. so. <laughs> Like, I, I get the sympathy factor of it, but you can't change it. If, if this is my destiny and me and God already talked about it, like, you can't change that. And then if you come trying to change what God do, does or what God wants, you're going to negatively impact me. I don't need that. We're going to have a problem, you know? So I, I just accepted it because I'm like, I cannot let anything happen to my mother. I cannot let anything happen to my sisters and my brothers. Like, I'm the first person in my family that started a business, you know? My sister went to college, got a master's, bachelor's, all of that. And it's like, I didn't go to none of that. I went to Mount Sac for a winter session. I was like, hey, you can keep this math class. I'm out. Shout out Mounties. Shout out Mount Sac. Sorry, I had to go. 94 to 99. That's yeah. how we do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I don't have a choice. I, I, I got to get shit done. I got dreams. The, the doctors, I literally saw a doctor... My, I met my primary care physician, my new one, since the accident, um, probably like last month, end of last month. And he's talking to me like this. And he keeps running the same stethoscope test on me. Like he's listening here, he's listening to my back. He's like, breathe, breathe. And I'm like, dog, why you keep running the same test on me? Like what? And he was like, I am twice your age. I would not have been able to survive what you survive. And I don't understand how you're alive right now. And I'm like, that's called God. <laughs> That's it. I don't know either, but here we are. So what are we doing? Like, and that's my life. Thank you for your strength, your <laughs> vulnerability. Thank you for sharing your story and your space. You're welcome. First podcast done. Amen. There we go. Thanks for watching the Aaron Bender podcast, whether it's on YouTube or IGTV or DBNA TV, streaming online at dbnatelevision.tv. Connect with me on social media, aaronbender.com. Email me guest ideas or comments, aaronbendermedia at gmail.com. Be well and thanks for watching.